Hello, my little munchkins. Welcome back for part two of chapter 12. Um, in the last part one of chapter 12, the Wicked Witch of the West has just used the charm of the golden cap, which we learned is only in the book, to send the winged monkeys to go and collect Dorothy and her three friends and carry them, well, destroy Dorothy, the Tin Man, and the Tin Woodman, or the Tin Man and the Scarecrow but um, to bring the lion back to her. So that's kind of where we left off in the last chapter. Let's see what happens. Some of the monkeys seized the tin woodman and carried him through the air until they were over a country thickly covered with sharp rocks. Here they dropped the poor woodman who fell a great distance onto the rocks where he lay battered and dented and he could neither move nor groan. Others of the monkeys caught the scarecrow, and with their long fingers, they pulled all the straw out of his clothes and head. They made his hat and boots and clothes into a small bundle, and they threw it on top of the branches of a tall tree. The remaining monkeys threw pieces of stout rope around the lion and wound many coils around his body and head and legs until he was unable to bite or scratch or struggle in any way. Then they lifted him up and flew away with him to the witch's castle, where he was placed in a small yard with a high iron fence around it so that he could not escape. But Dorothy, they did not harm at all. She stood with Toto in her arms, watching the sad fate of her comrades and thinking it would soon be her turn. The leader of the winged monkeys flew up to her, his long hairy arms stretched out and his ugly face grinning terribly. But suddenly he saw the mark of the good witch upon her forehead and he stopped and motioned to the others not to touch her. We dare not harm this little girl, he said to them. She is protected by the power of good. The power of good is greater than the power of evil. All we can do is carry her to the castle of the wicked witch and leave her there. So carefully and gently they lifted Dorothy in their arms and they carried her swiftly through the air until they came to the castle where they set her down on the doorstep. Then the leader said to the witch, we have obeyed you as far as we were able. The tin woodman and the scarecrow are destroyed. The lion is tied up in your yard. The little girl we dare not harm nor the dog she carries in her arms. Your power over us has ended. You will never see us again. Then all the winged monkeys with much laughing and chattering and noise flew into the air and were soon out of sight. So here's the picture of them carrying off with our four friends. Here's the scarecrow and the tin woodman. And over here, you have to really use your eyes to see close. Here's the lion and Dorothy and Toto. So that mark on Dorothy's forehead really saved her from terrible fate. The wicked witch was both surprised and worried when she saw the mark on Dorothy's forehead, for she knew well that neither the winged monkeys nor she herself dare hurt the girl in any way. She looked down at Dorothy's feet and seeing the silver shoes, she began to tremble with fear for she knew what powerful charms belonged to them. Dorothy doesn't know, but there's something going on with those shoes, huh? At first, the witch was tempted to run away from Dorothy, but she happened to look into the child's eyes and saw how simple the soul behind them was. And she realized that the little girl did not know the wonderful power that those silver shoes gave to her. So the Wicked Witch laughed to herself and thought, I can still make her my slave, for she does not know how to use her power. Then she said to Dorothy harshly and severely, Come with me and see that you mind everything I tell you, for if you do not, I will make an end of you, as I did the woodman and the scarecrow. Dorothy followed her through many of the beautiful rooms in her castle until they came to the kitchen where the witch bade her clean the pots and kettles and sweep the floor and keep the fire fed with wood. 
Dorothy went to work meekly, with her mind made up to work as hard as she could, for she was glad the Wicked Witch had decided not to kill her. With Dorothy hard at work, the witch thought she could go into the courtyard, harness the cowardly lion like a horse. It would amuse her, she was sure, to make him draw her chariot wherever she wished to go for a drive. But as she opened the gate, the lion gave a loud roar and bounded at her so fiercely that the witch was afraid and ran out and shut the gate. What does that show that the lion has? Yes, he's brave, right? So here he is so worried that he wants to go ask the wizard for courage. And look how brave he's being. Well, if I cannot harness you, said the witch to the lion, speaking through the bars of the gate, I can starve you. You shall have nothing to eat until you do as I wish. So after that, she took no food to the poor imprisoned lion. But every day, she came to the gate at noon and asked, Are you ready to be harnessed like a horse? And the lion would answer, No, if you come in this yard, I will bite you. Now the reason the lion did not have to do as the witch wished was every night while the woman was asleep, Dorothy carried him food from the cupboard. After he had eaten, he would lie down on his bed of straw and Dorothy would be lie beside him and put her head on his soft, shaggy mane. They would talk of their troubles and try to plan an escape. But they could find no way to get out of the castle for it was constantly guarded by the yellow winkies who were the slaves to the Wicked Witch and too afraid of her not to do as she told them. The girl had to work hard during the day and often the witch threatened to beat her with the same old umbrella she always carried in her hand. But in truth, she would never hurt Dorothy because of that mark on her forehead. The child, of course, did not know this and was full of fear for herself and Toto. Once the witch struck Toto with a blow with her umbrella and the little brave dog flew at the wicked witch and bit her leg in return. The witch did not even bleed where she was bitten. She was so wicked that the blood in her had dried up years before. Dorothy's life became very sad and she grew to understand that it would be harder than ever to get back to Kansas and Aunt Em again. Sometimes she would cry bitterly for hours, with Toto sitting at her feet and looking into her face, whining dismally to show how sorry he was for his little mistress. Toto did not really care whether he was in Kansas or the Land of Oz, as long as Dorothy was with him. But he knew the little girl was unhappy, and that made him unhappy too. Now the Wicked Witch had a great longing, longing to have for her own the silver shoes which the girl always wore. Her bees and her crows and her wolves were all lying in heaps and drying up, and she had used up all the power of the golden cap. But if she could only get hold of the silver shoes, they would give her more power than all of the other things she had lost. So here's a great picture of Dorothy cleaning the floors. And here you see what the Wicked Witch looks like in the storybook. You see she has that umbrella and her eye patch because she only has one eye. And there's Toto down there who's barking at her. And she threatens Dorothy that she's going to hit her with the umbrella, but she never ever will because Dorothy has that mark on her forehead. The witch watched Dorothy carefully to see if she ever took off the silver shoes, thinking she could steal them. But the child was so proud of her pretty shoes that she never took them off, except at night when she took her bath. The witch was much too afraid of the dark to go into Dorothy's room at night to take the shoes. And her fear of water was greater than even her fear of the dark. So she never came near when Dorothy was bathing. Indeed, the old witch never ever touched water and would not let water touch her in any way. So here she is, this powerful wicked witch, and she's afraid of two things, the dark and water. 
pretty interesting for a witch, don't you think? But the wicked creature was very cunning, and she finally thought of a trick that would give her exactly what she wanted. She placed a bar of iron in the middle of the kitchen floor, and then, using her magic arts, she made the iron bar invisible to human eyes. So when Dorothy walked across the floor, she stumbled over the bar, not being able to see it, and she fell down at full length. She wasn't much hurt, but in her fall, one of the silver shoes came off. And before she could reach it, the witch snatched it away and put it on her own skinny foot. The wicked woman was greatly pleased with the success of her trick, for as long as she had one of the shoes, she owned half the power of the magic. And Dorothy could not use it against her, even if she had known how to do it. The little girl, seeing she had lost one of her pretty shoes, grew angry and said to the witch, Give me back my shoe! I will not, retorted the witch, for it is now my shoe and not yours. You are a wicked creature, cried Dorothy. You have no right to take my shoe from me. Hmm. I shall keep it just the same, said the witch, laughing at her. And someday I shall get the other from you too. This made Dorothy so very angry that she picked up the bucket of water that stood near and she dashed it all over the wicked witch, wetting her from head all the way to foot. Instantly, the wicked woman gave a loud cry of fear. And then as Dorothy looked at her in wonder, the witch began to shrink and fall away. See what you have done, the wicked witch screamed. In a minute, I shall melt away. I'm so very sorry, said Dorothy, who was truly frightened to see the witch actually melting like brown sugar right before her eyes. Didn't you know water would be the end of me? Asked the witch in a wailing, despairing voice. Well, of course not, answered Dorothy. How should I? Well, in a few minutes, I shall be all melted and you will have this castle to yourself. Oh, I've been wicked in my day, but I never thought a little girl like you would be able to melt me and end my wicked deeds. Look out, here I go. And with these words, the wicked witch fell down in a brown, melted, shapeless mass and spread all over the clean boards of the kitchen floor. Seeing that she had really melted away to nothing, Dorothy drew another bucket of water and threw it over the mess. Then she swept the water and the brown melted witch right out the door. After picking out the silver shoe, which was all that was left of the old woman, she cleaned it, dried it with a cloth, and put it back on her foot again. Then, being at last free to do as she chose, she ran out to the courtyard to tell the lion that the wicked witch of the West had come to an end and they were no longer prisoners in her strange land. And there she is, melted, gone. So let's look at chapter 12's pictures in the picture book first before we do anything else. So here is a picture in the picture book of the witch with the crows and the wolves. And here you'll see in this picture book, she looks very different than in the other storybook. Here she is sending the monkeys and there's the golden crown. So it looks even more different in this picture book. And here she is again. And man, does she want those silver shoes. You can see Dorothy has the silver shoes on in this picture. And here, of course, is a great picture of Dorothy dashing the water over the witch. And that is, of course, when the witch melts down into a puddle, they keep saying, of brown sugar. And here's a funny little picture up at the top. There's the melted mess 
with the silver shoe still in it, just like Dorothy thought. Well, she cleaned it off and put it back on her foot. So, obviously, the witch always looks different depending on which illustrator decides to draw it. In the movie, however, things are a little different. In the movie, all the characters go to the Wicked Witch Castle. So the Tin Man doesn't get dropped on rocks and the Scarecrow doesn't get stuck up in a tree. Um, in the movie, they all end up at the Wicked Witch's castle. And here's a great picture of one of the flying monkeys and the Wicked Witch and Dorothy. And this is how they could see Dorothy. So in the storybook, she could see with her telescope eye the Wicked Witch could. In the movie, she sees through her crystal ball. So that's very different. That's another difference between the book and the movie. Um, of course, in the book, we know her shoes are silver. In the movie, of course, they're ruby red slippers. And the witch tries to grab them off Dorothy's feet. And you can see the magic charm. It's shocking the witch's hands. So in the movie, the witch is not allowed to touch the shoes. She can't get them off of Dorothy's feet. So that's another difference. And then, of course, she is also green in the movie. Can you imagine having to do all of that makeup to turn her green every day? And then here is a great picture of all the characters melting her in the movie. You can see, there they are. And they're all there in the movie. So that's another difference because in the storybook, only Dorothy is there. The lion is outside being kept captive and the Tin Woodman and the um, Cowardly, or and the Scarecrow haven't been rescued yet. So it was only Dorothy in there. You can see a flying monkey right there. So that's a little bit different, but there she is melting away. And a fun fact about watching the movie is there was actually a trap door under her skirt. So when she melts away in the movie, she actually was climbing down into a trap door because of course the movie is real people acting, right? And something else that's pretty interesting about the fact that it's real people acting is, of course, their makeup looks so amazing. I mean, when you think that the Tin Woodman is actually a man, and the Scarecrow is actually a man, and the Lion is actually a man. They were played by men, so they had to be in these costumes all day. Same with the witch. The witch was played by a woman named Margaret Hamilton. And guess what her job was? She was a first grade teacher. Can you believe that? She had always loved acting and she was a first grade teacher. And when they decided to make this movie, she loved the book. So she decided to say yes to being the Wicked Witch of the West. And she played the Wicked Witch. She did such a wonderful job, but she was worried that she was too scary. So for the rest of her life, she traveled around to schools, just like ours, and she taught kids how to act so that they could see that she was just acting. She was actually the kindest actress that there was during the movie. All the characters said that she was their favorite and the kindest and the sweetest um, while they were filming this movie, but she played this wicked witch. So, um it would have been really neat to meet her and hear about her experience playing somebody that was so wicked um, when actually she was a teacher just like me. And she loved kindergartners and first graders. So I always thought that that was a really fun fact about the movie. So now we are on chapter 13. And obviously now um, Dorothy has this castle to herself. She has the lion with her, but she doesn't have the Tin Woodman or the Scarecrow. So we will meet back again for the next chapter, which is chapter 13, and it is called How the Four Were Reunited. So the word reunited means to come back together. So I sure hope that they are. 
Um, so I'll see you back then, munchkins. And um, ding dong, the witch is dead. Yay, they got her. So Dorothy got managed to kill off both wicked witches in Oz. The east, a house landed on. The west, she melted with water. Pretty powerful little girl, don't you think? All right, little munchkins. Mwah. There's no place like home. Bye.